Hey friends, Megan McIntosh here. Welcome to this video. Today I'm going to talk to you about the tiny shifts that you do in your business that make the results that you get you the clients versus thinking about doing these massive changes in your business and really it comes down to the small things that you do in your strategy and the way you think and shifting your mindset that are the things that are going to really catapult you to results. So if you're there watching, let me know, say um, if you're watching down below in the comments. If you're watching live, you can put a one down below in the comments. If you're watching the replay, feel free to put a two down below in the comments. You can also do hashtag replay. Also, let me know where you're coming in from, what city, what town, what country. I am in good old Canada, <laughs> Ontario. Hey D. And we just had Thanksgiving. I was up in Kingston, which is about three hours east of Toronto on the way to, hey, hey, um, on the way to Ottawa. And so I didn't really actually, this is the first time, well, I probably spent other times without my family because I've lived in different countries, but I didn't um, see them this weekend. Hey D! <laughs> and, uh, but it was really nice. We went to Kingston and we just visited Devin's family and then we went to about an hour away to this lake to have a nice beautiful um, fire by this campsite. So it was a really great time to get away, especially with the leaves changing. The fall weather is amazing and it's incredible and so beautiful. So thankful for that, right? Okay, so this is gonna be a business live and it's really gonna be talking about what are those small shifts and how you can think about your business in a way that's strategic and um, makes you feel like you're moving the needle. So when I coach with people, people come with all different types of issues or things that they wanna fix in their business or maybe they are just trying to get their first client or maybe they already have clients, maybe they even have a sales team and they want their sales team to um, get more sales and make more money and they want a system for that team, right? Everybody is going to have um, something in their business, a problem that they want to solve and they want a solution for it, right? And if you're doing coaching, you might be doing coaching where you're asking questions only with your clients. I do a little bit of both. When I coach, I'm asking a lot of questions to find out what their thinking is first and then um, once they tell me they're thinking, I listen, I say that makes sense, and then I maybe give them a different type of perspective to showcase w what I would maybe do, or I would also give some strategy ideas. So I do coaching um, where I meld the consulting with coaching. So I don't want to just constantly be saying, this is what I do, this is how I do it. I want to hear their thinking on things where their business is concerned so that they've done the thinking, they've done the high level strategic thinking when on a specific problem, right? And obviously there's some things where they have no clue and they don't really know where to go with that problem, but oftentimes people do understand what's going on in their business. They're just not able to shift it out of it or think about it differently. And so when I think about um, what people need to do in their business, there's specific things that are business um, foundations in your business, right? So there are things like your ideal client, knowing your target market, and whether that is your audience or your niche, or you know, there's so many different ways to say it, but really it is, there's a group of people that you're solving a problem for. And this problem could be solved um, by a slightly different group depending on your offers, right? So you might have an offer that's for beginner entrepreneurs, and you might have an offer that is for um, entrepreneurs that are scaling their business, right? More companies or whatever it is. So those would be two different niches, but also, you, so you can have one group of people that you're speaking to, but when you're selling an offer, you wanna make sure that that specific offer that you're putting out there is solving a specific problem for a specific group of people, right? And then you target your marketing and your content and your sales to that group of people. So that's just like a really big business foundation to think about. Um, that is one of the main things you need to know is what are your offers and who are the people you're selling those offers to. And um, that like, and a lot of times, the reason why people aren't selling or they're not making money is because they really haven't nailed some of these things down. Maybe they 
have an idea of who their clients are, but they haven't um, really come to terms with where they are in their journey, right? So I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners. So I would want to look at where are they in their business journey? Are they people that are in a nine to five currently? Are they people that already have a business? Are they people at a certain income bracket in their business? So it really depends. And I work with different groups of people actually. Uh, like I said, I have worked with people that are actually have a big business, right? And they have a sales team. And so I've worked in solving a specific problem with that type of business owner. And then I've also worked with someone who's never even had a business before and they started off in their nine to five. Each of their problems is going to be different in their business. And so you have to think about your offer that you're putting out there that that offer needs to tailor and be really specific about who that person is and where they are in terms of needing that problem solved. And I think a lot of times people think about ideal client and market research as finding out um, what are the books they read and uh, are they a female or a male or how much money are they making or do they have this type of education or you know that or the persona idea of the client but I don't think that's as important as knowing the problem that that person has like it doesn't matter I've worked with people that um, have different types of companies and one might be a man and one might be a woman and they might be totally different age brackets but they have the same problem so I want you to think about that is that um, the foundational skills that you need to know and the foundational parts of your business are the things that are going to help you have the confidence to sell and to market that. And oftentimes people get tripped up in the ideal client and niching and target market as well as the offer creation because those are really things that you need to do, put a lot of care into before you start selling it. Because if you're not putting the care in the way you're creating the offer, then it's not gonna to speak to a specific person. So if you're putting an offer out there but it's not landing or people aren't buying from you and that offer is just not working, it yes, it could be that you um, don't have a big audience but usually it's because you don't have an audience of the people that you're trying to sell that offer to. And so if you don't have an audience of people that you're trying to sell that specific offer to, you have to then get an audience of those type of people to you know, see your promotions and your marketing. And so this is like a small shift to think about is if you're not selling an offer to first look at the offer and understand who am I targeting this to and how am I, it's not just like, am I putting a lot of marketing promotions out there and I'm putting, writing a lot of content for it. If you don't even have the people in front of you to sell it to, it's not going to sell. All right, so that, that's one little subtle shift is making the shift and understanding your offer inside and out and who it's um, solving a problem for and really talking to those people, right? That is like a foundational business thing, but so many people um, get tripped up in the beginning part in, of that because, because it's just a lot of work, right? It can seem like a lot of work to put an offer together and make it the right offer for whoever it's going to be. And sometimes you're not sure who the offer is speaking to. All right, and then the other shift I wanna talk about is a shift in understanding your content and how even like a slight change in your voice in the way you write your content is going to call in different people. So one of the things that I learned, I did a mastermind with Juliana Garcia and I learned all her little copywriting and marketing tricks and techniques for messaging. And she had done a storytelling um, course with, I can't remember who the guy's name is, but she had done her own content creation and learned from this like master of storytelling. And one of the things that she talked about was you wanna make sure that the people that you're talking to in your copywriting are the people that are gonna buy from you and that you're talking to that higher version of them, of that person, okay? So when you're putting the content out there, you want them to already believe that they are that person and that you or your solution is going to help them, but it's not like they can't figure it out themselves. And you don't want them to feel like they have to rely on you or that um, because then it might you might end up with a needy client. So you really have to look at your copywriting and you can make such subtle shifts in your copywriting to help you sell. Because talking one way to a person, right? If they're at a 
say you're talking to a business owner who's already in business and very confident in their business and confident in themselves. If you're saying, do you struggle or um, is this hard or do you, you know, if you're doing um, language that is quite, um, not negative, but languaging where they feel that they're not uh, competent and they're going to feel like you're talking down to them or they're gonna feel like, well, I'm already this badass, so why are you talking to me like that, right? So I don't really resonate as well with that type of content if someone's saying, oh, are you struggling to do this or is this hard for you or you're you're having problems with this. It just doesn't really resonate with me because I'm always looking for the subtle shifts. I'm always looking for those incremental um, extra like that, the sprinkle on the ice cream, right? That extra potent energy from a coach. I'm looking for those small shifts that I can make. I already know my business foundations. I already know how to write content, but I want to make it better. I already know how to sell, but I want to, um, you know, make my craft even better. There's something that Will Smith said about the difference between talent and skill. And talent is when you're born with it and skill is where you're basically honing your craft and making it better with the amount of time you're putting into it. And that's what I always think about is, I'm going to learn from someone where maybe they're slightly better at a specific craft than me in terms of maybe a business skill and me hone it even more. And I think that's something that obviously if you're just getting into business, you're wanting to learn the the small details of how to do something, right? Like the ABCs. But once you know what you need in your business, right? Once you know I need offers, I need to know my ideal client, I need to be putting content out there consistently, I need to be marketing in these specific places. Once you know the basics of business, then you, what you'll have to be doing is you're gonna be t testing and tweaking your different strategies and testing and tweaking the things that you're doing to say, okay, why is this not working right now? I've been doing this for a month or something. And it could be like the nuance in your brand. It could be um, one of the things that I did started doing maybe a year and a half ago. I can't remember. I took an Instagram brand strategy course. It was called like Instagram, uh, Instagram makeover with Kat, um, what's her last name? Coroy. And she's all about making her Instagram look really good. She has over 100,000 followers on Instagram. And I really liked her aesthetic of her brand on Instagram. And I knew that I'm not a big design person, right? My, my specialty is more in writing and talking and speaking and selling and marketing, but not really the brand. Like I'm not a designer. I'm not, you know, I can create a Canva graphic, but... Um, I just don't have that eye for design. It, and that would be something if I wanted to get good at design, I would probably wanna you know, research that and get better at that skill. So I decided I want to learn more about brand strategy and branding and design. So I'm gonna take this course that talks about Instagram design. And so I started playing around with my Instagram and getting better at the intricacies of branding and understanding, hey, if I, you know, if I put this specific Instagram post here and this other post here and this quote here and this color post here, it looks better on my feed. Now that is a small subtle shift than just putting posts up with content, right? It's really, I actually plan out my feed with Planoly in advance because, and I move my tiles around so it looks aesthetically pleasing, right? And another thing that you can upgrade your brand with is literally a photo shoot. And I'm sure you know this, but if you start thinking about, okay, I want to do a photo shoot, but you just go to the photo shoot with any direction for the photographer, they might not create photos that are going to be right for you. And so, you know, you can then go on other people's Instagram feeds and look at their photo shoots and look at poses that they have, save them in your Instagram. So then you can help direct that photo shoot. And so it's all these little things that add up, right, to the perfect um, strategy, right? So like you have your brand strategy. Okay. How is your brand strategy? Do you have specific colors in your business that you're using for the way you dress? Or do you have a specific aesthetic in terms of the, the feeling that you want to get it across, right? So like specific colors have different feelings to them, right? So you might want to have black if you want to be bold and red, if you want to have the bold. And if you want to have like a softer feeling, you might want to use softer pastel colors, right? These are things to think about. And these are things that brands think about but oftentimes this is stuff that um, you know when you're first growing your business it's not something that you take time to think about 
And I think that when you're building your business and you're growing it and you're bringing in more money, this is when you're starting to think about these other t subtle shifts, right? You've already figured out all the elements of your business, right? You know, okay, I know my offer. I know my ideal clients. I know um, how often I'm going to be posting. I know what I'm going to be posting. I know the type of posts I'm going to be posting. And that's then from there, okay, how do I make those subtle shifts so that my brand looks even better? How do I, what, how many more client testimonials do I need to put out there so that people start trusting me more, right? Comparison to my competitors out there. And you have to think about all these things. It's literally like layer upon layer upon layer of new subtle things that you add to increase that, um, the, increase the, uh, what, what's the word? I was gonna say um, the longevity of your brand, but also the expert um, element of your brand, right? And I think that this is these are the things that, the tweaks, the strategies, that you start adding to your business as you grow. For instance, you might just be promoting yourself on Facebook and Instagram and then you want to then get into YouTube or um, Twitter or Pinterest or wherever, or LinkedIn. And so these are the subtle things that you then add in as you've already established your brand foundation. And it really is these subtle shifts is learning, okay, um, what are other people doing? Like, what are the my competitors doing? This is something that most businesses do and that I feel like the coaching industry talks about in terms of looking at your competitors and that feeling of jealousy or that feeling of comparison-itis and that feeling of, what's the other feeling that they say? Um, I think it's mostly like jealousy and comparison and, and don't always look at other people to compare. but because people are saying don't look at your competitors and don't look at other people in the market, that is like one of the biggest things that most brands do is they look at the market and they look at what the market's currently selling. And so one of the things I always recommend my clients do is, yes, maybe you will feel like jealous or in comparison because maybe there are a few steps ahead of you, but you still need to look at your competitors or at least a few of them to figure out what are they selling? What are the type of products and services they're selling? And am I selling something similar or am I selling something quite different? Um, how are they leading their clients to buy that product, right? That mastermind or that course. And I think it's important to understand that because if you don't have any clue of the marketplace, if you don't have any clue of what other people are selling and you just put something out there, it might not work. But if you start seeing what other people are selling and you understand your gifts and what you're able to give, you might say, well, you know what? I'm selling a sales course, right? Let's say you're selling a sales course or a content course. Hey, um, other people have sold sales courses and done well and it's awesome. You don't have to do the same course as them on sales, but you can give it your own spin and give it your own um, tweak, right? And I, this is the thing is that you can take courses and, and go into different masterminds and the thing that a lot of people are looking is that magic secret, right? That, okay, if I go to this course or I book with this person, I'm going to get that magic secret. And people say, there's no magic secret. It's like learning your mindset and knowing the foundations. And that is true. But what's unique is when you do learn from other people and you do get into their containers or you coach with them. Uh, you actually learn the magic secret that their essence is. So when someone coaches with me, they're going to learn my secrets. They're going to learn my systems, my processes, the way I work, right? They're going to actually tap into my brain. So no, of course, when you take that next course, you're not going to learn the magic secret, the secret that's going to solve all your problems or get you all those clients. However, you are learning from someone who's already created their own processes and their systems of success. And so if you think, well, who do I want to learn those systems from? That's who you would coach with or that's who you would take a product or program or service from. And so for me, I always think about that. I think about, okay, what is going to make me stand out versus other people when I'm selling my products and services? Because of course, in the coaching industry, the industry that I'm in, there's a lot of people selling coaching. There's a lot of people selling sales. There's a lot of people selling content and different types of strategies. So what makes mine different? And that's something that you want to ask yourself because when you think about that, you have to think about, I need to set myself apart even when I may be selling something similar because then that person might buy this person's coaching over mine 
what sets you apart like and what is your framework what is your messaging and you can make um specific things about you like in terms of your content and the way you're putting your messaging out there but it is also like your way of doing things and so the way i think about it is what is my thing that is different than anyone else and I know that my thing is my sales. Like I have, you know, so much background in sales and I can teach sales in my sleep. So, and I have things that a lot of people don't like to talk about. A lot of people, you know, don't, they, a lot of people put down sales because they believe online it should just be marketing. And I think that um, I read an article recently about personalization of marketing. And that's exactly what sales is and how it's going towards personalization. And I think this is such a big thing because people are kind of over blanket marketing. And sometimes you can see through the smoke and mirrors and relationship marketing and, and having that high touch or having that ability to uh, get to know someone is more important now. And so I like that's one of the things that I talk about is that you know, you could be having content, putting, you could be putting your content out there and it's not because the algorithms are so competitive, there's so many people doing the same thing, you might be reading post after post that is very similar. Like even if you have the best copywriting out there, sometimes it's like, yeah, I've heard that before, right? Like I've read a lot of things, posts online and after a while it sounds the same and you might be noticing the same thing. And so what differentiates someone from someone else? Yes, they could put it in their copy, but it could also be with their sales and the way they sell. So like that's one of the things that I differentiate is I do help people sell. I do help people with the sales process and feel comfortable that this is like another marketing tool, right? Learning how to sell and to get leads and lead generation through sales is an actual, like a really good skill to have. And a lot of people don't have that skill. Another thing that I always promote is my mar mindset and marketing, right? My marketing, I've taken copywriting courses. I'm a writer. That's my background, right? I write scripts for a living as well as doing coaching. And I've been writing forever. I have a postgrad in journalism, right? And so that's another thing is like, I will have my eyes on your stuff. I've done that forever. Before I even got into coaching, that's what I did as a career is I was in sales, but I was always the last person to look at things. I was like called anal eye because I always looked at things with such um, precision. And so that's another thing that I always work with my clients in is I'm really good at helping people really hone in on their message and really make their copy come out, right? I'm really good at copy editing. And then the other thing is the mindset. Like I've been a yoga teacher, I have three different yoga teacher trainings and I've been, um, you know, through my own challenges with my mom dying and, and just having a whole bunch of things in my life. And so I've ha done a lot of personal development and personal growth throughout my life. That's helped me get where I am and help me um, be a happy person. And so these mindset trainings and these personal growth is the way that I teach. I train through understanding you and, and to get to know you and with like I have a life coaching background and a whole bunch of other aspects of my career but being able to understand the way someone's thinking why they might be having blocks why they might be having resistance because I've had some of those things myself and so being able to use the tools I've had I have to help people overcome their own resistance so that's another thing and I would say the last thing that I have that really differentiates me is the creativity and innovation piece, right? I was in the entertainment and advertising industry for many, many years. And that was like, gave me a front row seat into um, brands and the way they promoted themselves. And, you know, I, I've traveled a lot going to different events for that and being able to see the advertising industry really close at hand. And what people are doing when they're promoting themselves online is basically advertising. They're having to um, write copy in a way that is persuasive and talk in a way that's persuasive and sell in a way that's persuasive. And I spent like nine years in a row going to like the number one um, festival for advertising in the world in the south of France where I had to learn all that and I went to conferences and events for learning how to be persuasive and understanding marketing strategy from the beginning, right? from when a brand works with an advertising agency and how that all connects. And not very many people in the coaching space literally have advertising industry experience. They might have experience 
maybe at an ad agency, but they don't have, you know, 15 plus years in the industry going to all these places where they're like talking to the top um, the creative directors and people in advertising and the directors, right? Like I've actually coached directors of TV commercials and coached people that are freelance art directors or creative directors that are coming up with these campaigns. And I think that it's different because um, like in the coaching industry, there's a lot of people that come into the coaching industry because they want to be a coach or they want to um, teach, teach, right? So that you see a, a there's, there's these two things, right? Well, actually, there's maybe a couple more, but basically, I'm noticing in the industry, there's a lot of people that have gotten really good at their own Instagram, are really good at um, marketing and branding themselves, and so they'll teach that, right? They'll teach the marketing, the branding, the sales skills, or whatever they're gonna teach. They're teaching something that they've learned themselves, right? But they won't necessarily coach, right? They'll be able to train on it, they'll be able to teach on it, but they don't necessarily know how to deal with someone who um, is implementing but not getting results, or there's mindset stuff, or there's blocks around it, and here's all the information, why aren't you doing it, right? Like, they're creating a course, but someone's not implementing, or they're not doing it, and, and that person is maybe just giving them the details, right? It's almost like going to YouTube, or going to, Google and learning how to do something and having yourself getting a hand hold on how to do something, right? By taking a course with someone that's really good at it, which I think is a great thing. If you need skill and you need to improve a skill in a certain area of your business, I definitely recommend a, a course um, to take on that skill. However, it's also good to have coaching and to understand like, how do I implement this skill? How come I'm not that great at this skill? How do I get better at this skill? How do I um, basically overcome me not wanting to do this skill, right? Anybody will tell you that if you wanna make money online, if you wanna get clients, you have to be consistent. Then how come there's so many people that aren't consistent? It's because it's, and they know they need to be consistent or they know they need to get better at copywriting but their message is still kind of like all over the place. Or they know that they need to create a really good offer, but they're just not really sure and they're changing their expertise every two minutes, right? These are just like simple things that your mind is creating drama around oftentimes. And so you're just not implementing, you're not putting things out. You're just, oh, like I'm not selling right now. It's not happening for me. And so the mind is like, let me come up with a solution, right? Let me, we got to change this. Oftentimes that's a huge thing and so I stop a lot of my clients from you know burning down their business or changing a strategy because it hasn't been pushed out long enough right like if you're changing your strategy all the time or you keep um, changing what you do or you keep changing the messaging that you're putting out and how you help people people are gonna get confused sometimes you have to stick with that message for a little bit of time before it actually works and that's a shift in mindset right that's not just a shift in strategy the shift in strategy is like actually to stay with the strategy longer rather than consistently switching the strategy oh instagram's not working for me i'm gonna try facebook now oh facebook's not working for me i'm gonna try youtube it's almost like okay like people make instagram alone work People make Facebook alone work. Okay, let's look at what you're putting out. Let's look at the content that you're actually putting out there. Okay, let's literally see how often are you putting out posts? What posts are you putting out? Um, are you kind of confusing in your message? Are you putting your offer out there? Like what are the things that you're actually putting out? And so it's really digesting and looking at those like intricate things that are gonna help you move the needle rather than jumping to another platform like an Instagram or jumping to YouTube when it's literally those subtle shifts that you need to make that will call in the clients for you and doing it over a longer period of time and being consistent with it and dealing, dealing with the drama in your mind that's saying, oh, it's not working yet and your mind being like, it's okay, I've literally just been putting out these posts for a week and last week I shifted my message. So obviously it's gonna take time for someone to get that, right? <laughs> or I'm just starting to put this offer out, right? People aren't really used to this offer. They don't know this offer. Um, you know, I'm gonna launch it again and I'm gonna get more people on board this offer. So I think those are the subtle shifts that I wanted to talk about. There's subtle shifts, I keep saying subtle, funny. Subtle shifts in your strategy, subtle shifts in your mindset, and subtle shifts in overall understanding business and understanding who you are and how you are 
um, making those shifts, um, understanding what you already have that is awesome in your business. Like looking at what you already have, looking at those elements that are working for you and then, or figuring out what is going to work. So that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're looking for subtle shifts, if you're looking for someone to look at your strategy and coach you through it and, you know, be a, um, an innovator with you and a creative mind brainstormer with you, uh, I would love to coach with you. It's my absolute honor to, I work with people of all different business levels in terms of if you're starting your business or if you do already have a team because I work with all different levels, but usually the problems I solve happen in the mindset, the sales, the um, strategy and the marketing, as well as the creativity and innovation and seeing those subtle strat strategic sh shifts, looking at um, your business with a fine tooth comb, looking where we can troubleshoot areas in your process or looking at the systems and then giving you the systems that I use, giving you the things that help me stay accountable to myself, right? Giving you the processes that I use to make content creation easy, giving you the processes that make, um, you know, me putting out content all the time. It's not just me, right? I have a system in place to do that. I have a virtual assistant, but I also have a system that puts that content out there consistently and the way I look at things, right? The way that um, my thought process is going. And so if you'd love to coach with me, if you're interested, definitely um, send me a message. I would love to hear from you. I have different options in terms of working with me so we could talk on the phone about that. And even if you decide not to work with me, you'll definitely get some insight into your business and I'll really be able to like look at your business and say, hey, have you thought about this? Have you tried this? Or this is something that I would do to help you get clients. Or this is something that I would shift slightly. You know, your message is awesome or your content's great, but this is what I would shift slightly to make it work for you even better or this is what you're doing in your sales but maybe this step in your sales process isn't as solid as it could be so if you're interested definitely send me a message i would love to hear from you and i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or evening wherever you are in the world bye